Welcome back to Gold Derby. I'm Christopher Rosen. I'm joined by Joy Zing. Joyce, it is early morning on Thursday, February 3rd. It's not It's not that early for us. No, it's not. It's like 10 <laughs> o'clock. But we're talking about the BAFTA nominations, which did come out early morning. I was up. Yeah, I, I watched that on my phone in bed. So Same. Yeah. I was looking at your tweets and your all caps, uh, Mike Feist love, which was one of the few bright spots for West Side Story. But <laughs> we have so much to talk about with the BAFTA nominations, Joyce. Just chaos. Uh, as, as I think uh, Catherine Hahn said on, on WandaVision, this is chaos magic, I would believe. Yeah, yes, yes, to Wanda, yes. Can you explain to me and to people who are watching this why the BAFTA nominations are so unhinged, I guess? Let's start there. Well, uh, you know, after two years ago when uh, Margot Robbie got double supporting actress nominations. Who for... could forget Mary, Queen of Scots, right? No, 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 this was the year after with... Uh, oh bombshell oh, yes. and once upon a time in hollywood that's right yeah she was also nominated mary queen of scots though wasn't she that that was the year before yeah and also at sag right she had BAFTA? yeah but um, i don't know she was at sag anyway go ahead anyway we'll keep going. and you know bafta has always had a uh, issues with um race Mm-hmm. So then that after that way. they implemented the jury system starting with last year and uh, directing in all four acting categories had uh, juries determine the nominations and they expanded the slots as well. And then last year, you know, we got a uh, chaos again. We, they just love serving chaos in Best Actress. <laughs> so, uh, you know, Carrie Mulligan snub a, a lot of the Oscar frontrunners snub last year and actress, save for Frances McDormand who won and Vanessa Kirby, who everyone thought was gonna get snubbed everywhere, but she and Frances made it in everywhere. And then because of Carrie's snub, they instituted the Carrie Mulligan rule, as I call it, for this year, in which for the acting categories, the top two vote getters from the first round, like the long list, are automatically nominated. And then the juries pick the other four acting nominations in those categories where, but like director is still fully juried because no one cared about any snubs in director last year. (laughs) So yeah, those are, that's the biggest thing because everything else basically is still a membership wide vote uh, except for casting, which is still juried, but yeah. So the nominees this this year, uh, just uh, top line headline stuff, Dune led with 11 nominations, Joyce, Mm -hmm. Uh, but no uh, nomination for Denny Villeneuve and Best Director. It was a Best Picture nominee. Uh, Mm -hmm. Power of the Dog had eight nominations, uh, nominations for Jane Campion and Benedict Cumberbatch, Cody Smith-McPhee, Jesse Plemons, and not Kirsten Dunst, which I'm sure we'll talk about all of these, just doing the, the main things. And then Belfast had six nominations. Best Picture was one but not Kenneth Branagh and Best Director. Uh, pretty, uh, not surprising there, but where do you want to start, Joyce? We could start a- anywhere. I-, I-, I would love to start. We could start Best Actress. We could do Belfast. Where do you want to go? Um, I, well, let's start with Director since we, we've named two people who were not there. Okay. I didn't predict either Kenneth or Denis. Did you? I'm going to take a look here. I had uh, I had Denis for sure. I'm, I'm actually shocked. And I did not have Kenneth. I had uh, Jane Campion, Power of the Dog. I had Denis for Dune, uh, Rasuke uh, Hamaguchi for Drive My Card, Spielberg for West Side Story, snubbed, not in here. Uh, Paul Thomas Anderson from Licorice Pizza, nominated, and uh, Julia DeCurno for Titan, and I had, and she was nominated as well. The actual nominees, Joyce, since we're doing this, were uh, most of those people we just mentioned. Um, it was- <laughs> Those are just your picks. <laughs> yeah. The real nominees were Paul Thomas Anderson, Jane Campion, uh, Audrey Diwan for Happening, which was a can. Uh, did that win at Can or no Venice? Right, I believe. Where was that? Venice, Happening. yeah. Uh, Julia DeCorno for Titan, uh, Rasuke Hamaguchi for Drive My Car, and Aleem Khan for After Love. So I had four of those six. I have four of the six as well. Yeah. Now, so. the headline here for me was no Denny, no Steven Spielberg, no Kenneth Branagh. I have all three presumably getting in at the Oscars, but now I'm not sure if maybe only one gets in. Uh, See, I didn't expect any of those three snubs to get in here because it was juried. And I was just like, they're not going to go for them because they're just um, like Spielberg. I just feel like that was like the, it for a jury. Like he's just like too mainstream and like too famous. And then we'll, we can talk about like West Side Stories like underperformance later, but I never had him in. 
And then Kenneth, I didn't think he would get in just going off of what happened with Belfast at the British Independent Film Awards. Mm -hmm. um, it led nominations, but it was snubbed in picture directing and screenplay. So, and it's still like uh, an Oscar-y front runner. So I felt like he was gonna get snubbed. And then Denis kind of the same thing, Oscar-y front runner, huge tech player. And it's just not, it doesn't feel like a jury pick. So I didn't have any of them here, so. I thought Denny would get in as one of the top two because I feel like he's like underlying. Well, there's no top two here. Okay. It's like the top two is only for acting. Got yeah. It. So this is like you should listen to the talk. That would be so yeah. helpful because you literally just said that. Uh, the big headline for me here was no Spielberg, but I'm like not as un, not as concerned because like we said, no Denny, no Kenneth Branagh. The other thing I think that I'm actually going to maybe end up predicting is we've been looking for who that fifth director is and is it like Thomas Vinterberg or like, you know, Paolo Palazowski or somebody like that, a, an international director who gets in even though they weren't nominated at the DGA or whatever. And that we've kind of focused on Ratsuke Hamaguchi, but I'm actually like going back to Julia DeCorno for Titan uh, because that has been a favorite since Khan, a divisive movie certainly, was not recognized, not, did not make the shortlist for international feature. So it can't get nominated there. And I almost wonder if like the director's branch is gonna like, uh, really be impressed with that film. Like if you think back to The Conjury, it was like Spike Lee was on that jury. It's like that I think filmmakers really appreciate that movie. And while I also think they appreciate Drive My Car, I wonder if Julia DeCarno gets in because of Khan and because of like her previous work. I don't know. And I can see her getting in as the fifth spot. And then the odd person out would be to me, either Kenneth Branagh or maybe Spielberg. Yeah, I think if it's not the DJ five, it's probably Spielberg or Brana missing. But I, I would still predict Hamaguchi over the Kurno. Okay, I'm going with our gold, our, our gold Derby Awards choice. The the Kurno got in, so she did. But Tatan uh, got into Best Picture too, right? Yeah, uh, it was very yeah. popular among you. You can vote vote for both of them right now. Yeah, but I don't know. I could see her getting in. I just think it's like, oh, that's like a great, great headline film, and I feel like we were sleeping on it, maybe or, or discounting it. At least maybe I was because it missed international feature and it obviously is very polarizing. And it seems like even from a critical standpoint, the there were shinier far uh, international films that came out later in the year, like Drive My Car or Worst Person in the World, uh, that kind of like dulled the enthusiasm for Titan. But like back in May, it was like very much in the conversation for her for best director, I felt like. I mean, even though it was very early days. So I don't know. I could see her getting in. I definitely think that the the nomination here helps, but I don't know. I guess. Want to go to best actress, Joyce? Because this is just unhinged. Um, yeah, second year in a row. So I love it. these. At first, I want to straight up love these nominations. This is like exciting. It, it, it is like, I don't have an issue with the six. It's just like oh, it's chaos. Awesome. <laughs> uh, so the nominees are Lady Gaga, House of Gucci, Alana Haim for Licorice Pizza, Amelia Jones for Coda, Renata Reinsen for Worst Person in the World, uh, Joanna Scanlon for After Love, and Tessa Thompson for Passing. Okay, I went three for six here. I believe I went three for six as well. Let me take a look here. I got too many windows open, Joyce. That's a big problem. I know. I got uh, three for six as well. I had I had uh, Renate, uh, Lady Gaga, and Tessa Thompson. Okay, I had Joanna, Tessa, and Renate. Yeah, and I I like I had Gaga in for a while, and then I dumped her last week for Nicole. <laughs> So I had Nicole, I had Olivia Coleman, and I had Rachel Zegler. So I was betting on either Rachel Zegler or Lana Heim, and I thought maybe Rachel Zegler, buoyed by her Graham Norton performance, would really get that you know, <laughs> British uh, the BAFTA vote. But no, uh, so she, she Heim, is uh, in London right now uh, doing yeah. Snow White for. Well, like, I, I know. I, we've yeah. seen the tweets, Joyce. We've seen. The I know. We we watched the uh, actors on actors. <laughs> <laughs> so so I had her in because I was like, oh, maybe that'll be like the one. Uh, I love these nominees. I have so many thoughts on this. First of all, the, here's what I wrote down. The first thing was Lady Gaga, best actress front runner, question mark. Okay, so Lady Gaga is the only one who, to hit every like major precursor in yes. this category, in best actress. Yes. Um, so I think she was, she was definitely top two. So my, I think top two here for actress was Gaga and Alana Haim because Ligurish Pizza did very well here. Basically maxed out on yeah. its potential, got best picture. Mm -hmm. PTA made director, only white man in that category. <laughs> Yep. in a jury <laughs> i think you're right about that so, absolutely so yeah then the, the jury picks were uh renate uh who actually i think i had her i i, I phonetically spelled her name reinsva i believe it is i said it wrong before mm -hmm. uh 
and then the others as well. For Tessa Thompson was a jury pick. That makes sense. We had predict. I predicted that. Did you predict that as well? Tessa, yeah. And Amelia, Amelia Jones also. And then um, anyway. Um, yeah. So like no Olivia Coleman, which like we all thought like oh, um, with like this new top two rule, like she is like definitely going to be one yes. of. I had her locked in. I had her one, Joyce. I had her winning. This I time. had her one too, because, you know, we all thought last year she was up for the father because it was fully juried and they were just right. kind of, you know, like over nominating her. And, and she has actually, since she, she's won a bunch of BAFTAs, obviously for the favorite and for TV as well, but they've, they've been snubbing her recently and uh, BAFTA TV awards, they're fully juried. So it's, it's, but it's kind of crazy that she didn't even make top two here. It's absolutely unhinged, especially because Jesse Buckley got in for supporting. Yeah, actress. I think Jesse was a jury save though. So yeah, so still. she wasn't, Olivia wasn't top two and no. was not a jury save. But still I'm like, oh boy. So uh, I guess it, let's go through. So like, I'm like, re- I'm ready to like, maybe say Lady Gaga is the front runner here. I think she can win this. Save, save no front runner, which we really would say right now, I don't think there is one for best actress. Like you could make a case for, any of the nom- any of the potential nominees and then also make a case for any of them not even getting nominated. Like I could sit here right now and say that like Nicole Kidman maybe doesn't get nominated or uh, Kristen Stewart is probably crossed off at this point because she missed here. Yeah, or, I I mean, neither of us predicted Kristen here. No, but I, mean, I had Nicole I Kidman. Her. So I'm like, I can make the case for anybody. And I'm like, what if it's Lady Gaga? I mean, she's definitely been the most visible of the contenders, I would argue. She's been everywhere. She's leaning on that method acting. People really love her. And I think no matter what you think of the movie, she is unequivocally the thing that everybody agrees on, right? Like everyone likes her performance, even people who don't like the movie. And I can see in a very close best actress race, maybe there is more passion for her performance than anybody else. I don't know. I could really see it happening. I would love it if we just have different winners again. <laughs> for in best I mean, we really could. So- um, uh, I, I think, uh, I mean, we'll, we'll do our, our yes. final Oscar predictions, uh, after this, yes. so stay tuned. Um, but yeah, this is a, a big, big boost for Gaga. I think she can win the BAFTA, I mean, you know, Gucci got 13 long list mentions and, you know, those don't, don't always transfer into a ton of nominations, but it did pretty well here. Um, no, no best picture, but the, this is five or best picture, right? Yeah, it, it got into British film, which has 10 mm-hmm. nominees. Spencer did not. Uh, Tough beat for, for Spencer. Uh, the zero nominations for Spencer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The other person I could see, I, I think the other person who could conceivably win here is, like you said, is Alana Haim. Yeah, I think Especially she would. Like they, the Brits really loved licorice pizza. Mm-hmm. So. And yeah, I'm like, all of these, I'm like, oh, we talked about this from an Oscar standpoint a couple weeks ago, I think. And I was like, just trying to think of, instead of just like chalk putting in who we expect, like who are people actually passionate about? And it's hard, it's like totally ephemeral because you're like, I'm not talking, there's the million, there's, there's the most, most people voted for Oscars than ever before, right? That's what the, uh, Don Hudson said this week. Yes, and thousands of, from, from 82 countries. 82 countries, thousands of voters. So it's hard to get like a, a true consensus just from like the air basically, or even like talking to people. Uh, but I'm wondering like, is that passion there for Alana Haim, Renata Reinsva, and Lady Gaga more so than these other performers. And maybe that gets them all in. I don't know. I guess we'll see. You'll see when you when I make my insane Oscar predictions later, Joyce. I know, because now I'm like, I want to put Alana back in because I had her in for like, I don't know, like eight weeks or something. I agree. I, I would say that, I mean, I think from the Baptist, what I would say looking at these BAFTA nominations is that there was passion for those performances based on, again, it's just the jury, it, maybe it's a jury save or whatever, right? But like there was passion enough to save those performances over like a Nicole Kidman or a Jessica Chastain or Jennifer Hudson. Or yeah. So like Kristen the thing Stewart. is, I don't, I, I, if Nicole and Jessica were not top two, I didn't expect them to be jury saves. I, right. I felt like they needed to be top two to get the nomination and clearly neither of them were. And we would have said if either one of them made it in here that they were a lot to win. Right. But now I'm like, oh, maybe, you know, maybe, yeah, not, maybe it's, here win you know, with, part. with the jury, it's like hard to say, cause it's, like they made, the long list, right? right? So um that's voted on by the general membership. So, right. you know, the jury picking a handful of people is not really reflective of how the entire membership sure. feels. 
Um, I would say I love, uh, I just, I, back to the front of this, I love this category though. I love all, the, like, these are great performances. Amelia yeah, Jones. This, is, the, this lineup is rules. perfectly fine. <laughs> yeah, it's like, totally rules. Tessa Thompson for passing. It was great to see her show up. Another uh, actress who I think people would be very excited about if she made it in mm -hmm. uh, at the Oscars and remains like yeah, because it's shot. it's like Ruth has been you know the one getting in everywhere uh, without Tessa, so it's nice that they both right. got in. Uh, it's a it's a wild cat. I mean, like literally, I could come up like with multiple permutations of how this shakes out for the Oscars. But uh, let's go to the best actor, Joyce, uh, here at, at the BAFTA Awards. Uh, the nominees were Adil Akhtar for Ali and Ava. Mahershala Ali for Swan Song, Benedict Cumberbatch, Power of the Dog, Leo DiCaprio for Don't Look Up, Stephen Graham for Boiling Point, and Will Smith for King Richard. No Andrew Garfield, just totally blank. Tick, tick, boom, just ignored here. Uh, Denzel Washington cannot get a BAFTA nomination at still, all. Still Even never nominated. Still never nominated <laughs> somehow for what arguably is what the people have called the best performance of his career. Uh, no uh, Javier Bardem for Being the Ricardos. No Peter Dinklage for Cyrano. Uh, no Nicolas Cage, but great news here for, I guess, Leo. Can Leo, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like. Leo, uh, I think is top two here. Uh, Cause that Leo is win? not, not a, a jury friendly performance. Not he, he's not bad, but that's just not the type of performance that a jury would go for. And the, the purposes of this jury or were like the juries in general. Cause if you just look at the past two years with this, uh, system, uh, well, it was implemented to champion, obviously, diversity, inclusion, but also underdogs, and to ensure that smaller films and performances are seen, because, um, like, a lot of these films, especially, you know, these British films, like, lack visibility, and uh, the general membership can just kind of just check off the populist Right, Oscar-y contenders. You know, they it, it could it could get very basic here with the yeah. Brits, even though they could be snobby. Right. So, so like Marsha Ali is like a great example of that. I would argue. Yeah, and like that that movie. I don't know if you watched it. I I, I watched it. He's great in that movie, but Jeez. severely underseen. And obviously, yeah. Apple has two other big dogs in the running with Coda and Macbeth. You know, but that very very happy for Mahershala here. Um, I only went three for six here, which is kind of disappointing to me because I went six for six last year. <laughs> wow. Uh, I went uh, I went three for six as well. I had Benedict, Will Smith, and Al uh, Adil uh, Akhtar. And then I had Denzel Bardem and Garfield, just a total like clown. Yeah, clown I'm shirt. very sad for Andrew. Um, I felt like he needed to be top two here to, because I, again, I don't think he, uh, he would have been a jury pick, even though he's British, but... I think, I think, so my, my theory with Tick, Tick, Boom, and also West Side Story, which only got five nominations here, um, and also in a way, like, being a Ricardo's with, like, Nicole, uh, is that they're just, like, super American stories, and it did, they just, like, lack that British appeal, and just, I mean, like, West Side Story, set in Upper West Side Manhattan. <laughs> There's you a know, lot of references. Tick, Boom yeah. is about uh, an American theater legend. He's not, Jonathan Larson is not a global icon. Like people might know what Rent is, but like globally, they don't really have that attachment to him. Same thing with I Love Lucy and Lucille Ball. Like we already heard like Nicole and Javier talk about like how growing up, you know, they've, they've heard of I Love Lucy and Lucille Ball, but they don't understand like what an American institution she was. So and, and I remember like after I saw West Side Story, I was like, I don't know how it's gonna perform at BAFTA because it's, it's really, really good, but it's so American. And then I looked at how the first movie did yes, and so you did too. I did this morning. <laughs> and <laughs> it only got one nomination yes. for best film, it lost yes. to Lawrence of Arabia, but there were also 18 nominees. <laughs> it's, it's pretty wild. This was the, uh, it was the award ringman on 1963. Yeah, so it came 62. out. I, Came out yeah, American the movie came out in England in 62. It came right. out in 61 here in America, but right. Yeah. So it won Oscars, literally 10 Oscars. And then the next year was like BAFTA was like, you know what? It's fine. We got one nomination. It's good. Yeah. It's good I just think it's, it's, but I like really all that tells me like, you know, the snubbed in like best picture here and obviously Spielberg, which uh, I don't know if everyone expected, but I expected and like no Tony Kushner and missed some egregious craft uh nominations again missed editing and cinematography but i feel like it's just not up 
like to like the British taste level. I don't, I could still see it getting in at the Oscars. Um, but I think without like the British block support, it, it could, you know, take it out of the running to actually win best picture. Right. I think that's a, this was a bad sign, I think for that. And yeah. I think a great sign for power of the dog, because I would say just looking at this list of nominees, I think Benedict Cumberbatch is the front runner to win this. Oh yeah, I mean, like I've, I, he was like always winning BAFTA. <laughs> like even so if he didn't win, win the BAFTA. Oscar, like he's winning BAFTA. <laughs> so you have if he wins BAFTA, does if Andrew wins SAG, does Will actually win at the Oscars, or does one of those guys come back and win at the Oscars? I thought it was good news. I mean, I understand like maybe it was a jury pick, but I'm like good news that Will Smith made it here because. Like, I think if he would not have, I would have definitely moved off him for winning Best Actor at the Oscars, yeah. but that he's here, I think helps, again, he's made it, he's done everything, I feel like Will Smith has made every, cleared every hurdle that he needed to so far, and that's good news. Yeah, good I news do think him. he was a jury pick here, because um, I, again, I just <laughs> cannot see, like, Leo being a jury pick, and also uh, the round one voting, where the top two is determined, closed January 4th. So that was when like Don't Look Up was peaking. Yeah. You know, so 250 gazillion engagement minutes on Netflix. Yeah. So I, so that's why I think Leo was his top two. And, uh, you know, I'm also ready to put him back into my Oscar. I think I will too. We'll talk about this when we do our Oscar predictions, but I'm like ready to blow up a lot of my picks based on this. Yeah. So in terms (laughs) of like the Oscars, I, I can still see Andrew winning SAG. And I mean, Andrew's going to get the Oscar nomination. Um, I think right now, even despite the Andrew miss here, I feel like Will, Andrew, and Benedict Cumberbatch are as set in stone as you could get, and they will all get Oscar nominations. And I think four and five is very fluid and could come up with a lot of different picks. Mm -hmm. I think Denzel is still like okay for the Oscar, but like I I don't think anyone thought he was winning ever. No, I'm not. I'm not even convinced he's going to get it. We'll talk about it. yeah, I don't I don't know how much the the miss will hurt Andrew in terms of winning. I, I guess, you know, the easiest thing to say is like, oh, he can't win the Oscar now because he missed BAFTA. But like all that means is just he wasn't top two and the jury didn't right. save him. Like he still and made I, the long list. And I think we saw last year and with the way BAFTA does things, it's not a great it maybe it used to be like a great analog or like, you know, we could like one for one and be like, Well, oh, interestingly, whatever. last year the top eight categories were the same at the BAFTAs and Oscars. Like they they got Anthony Hopkins and Francis McDormand, you That's know. That's true. That's true. So, but uh, again, I think that just shows that no matter you know the the good intentions behind the the juries, um, you know, when the the entire membership votes at the end, it it's still like the Oscar front runners that rise to the top. Right. You I know, guess I like, meant from like a nomination standpoint. Like I wouldn't. I'm not going to count Andrew Garfield out because he wasn't nominated here. Obviously. I know. Maybe like, in the past, nomination. He's, maybe yeah. in the past it would have been like like when Regina King won and she missed BAFTA uh, for Beale Street. It was like you knew she was like it was just like oh that's like weird. That I she, I mean well like she I I never doubted her winning even though she right missed BAFTA like she also missed SAG but they had late screeners there too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Anyway. Let's do supporting actor choice because I know you're you're hyped for this one. Wow, you're skipping actress. Ugh. No, we did actress. Supporting actress. Oh, we'll start with supporting actor and go to supporting actress. <laughs> I was I like, well, do, that's rude. Let's do supporting actor first because uh, it's first in the list that I'm looking at actually. So I'm jumping around a little bit, but the nominees were Mike Weiss, West Side Story, <laughs> just Aaron right Hines out the gate for Belfast, Troy Kotz or Coda, Woody Norman for Come On Come On, Jesse Plemons, Power of the Dog, Cody Smith McPhee, Power of the Dog. I could right now honestly say that this is high. I would not be surprised if this is the five minus Woody Norman at the Oscars. Uh, you know what? That is my five at the Oscars. And I'm it's like, it. you, so you went five for six here or six? For six? I went five or six. I, pref- I did the best in supporting actor, the most chaotic category. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, who'd you miss on Woody Norman? I guess. Uh, no, I had Woody. I, I did not have Jesse. My, my other guy, Jesse, who I have at the Oscars, I had Benicio instead. Benicio del Toro for the French. Wow, Festival. that's wild. Uh, I, had, I know because I was like, I need someone here in the sixth spot. <laughs> I had uh, Cody, Troy, Mike Feist, and then I had Jared Leto, Jamie Dornan, and Kieran Hines. Wow, wow. Uh, I was yeah, really but going- I was like, I can't believe I went five for six here. <laughs> so the top line here, we both had him uh, first in our hearts. Mike Weiss. Uh, I know. And, you know, I, I'm just uh, grateful his uh, name uh, alphabetically is, is so early. It's, it's no a parasite situation. <laughs> it's just the first one. So a couple of things. I mean, I guess. 
I mean, he's a jury save. Let's be clear. We like Cody and Kieran, I think were top two. Seemingly it would be Cody and Kieran. Cody seemingly is the runaway pick here as he is in every other precursor for best supporting actor. Mm -hmm. Uh, But only good news for Mike Fights, especially because like we said, West Side Story was soft here, let's say. And they got five, five total. Yeah. And not like the most, uh, and like three of those categories were jury. (laughs) I'm just like very impressed that he made it though. I still am. I mean, he, he, he's a jury pick, but I, I felt confident in it because it's, it's, it's a jury friendly performance. And I think, you know, we've talked about this. Like if you watch the movie, like you just can't not fall in love with that performance. Like he's the best part of the movie. Like you just have to watch it. Um, and I don't, I don't know if he would have gotten in if it was a membership vote. I don't think, I think someone like Bradley Cooper and like Jared Leto like could have gotten in just. Maybe, but like, he made the long list that he made. The yeah, long he made the long himself. list. And I know a, like a lot of people were also predicting um, David Alvarez, who was also great in the movie uh, to be nominated here instead of Mike because of the diversity factor. But I was like, I just. I, I felt like if you compare them, like you just have to go with, it was like either Mike Feist or both of them. <laughs> like right, right. I, I couldn't see like David without Mike. I just feel like, again, the the, uh, the passion for Mike is, is evident here, even from a jury selection, right? So yeah, like, and I don't, I don't know if he'll get in Tuesday and I hope he does, but even if he doesn't, I'm glad he got one major precursor nomination out of this instead of just a handful of regional critics awards that, you know, no one's heard of, no offense, but he deserves more for this performance. And uh, it's been a rocky campaign for West Side Story. I I think I I laid out uh, my issues with it a couple of weeks ago, I think after SAG, with their like late screeners and everything. And and what I would have done, Disney hire me to run this campaign. Uh, So it's, it's good that he made it in here and he got this. So from looking at this, Cody is winning, I would imagine, right? Is that who you're going to pick? Yeah, I don't think like Jesse being in here hurts him at all. So do you think there's a case for Kieran? To win? Yeah. Mm, no, I don't. I don't know. Like to win the BAFTA or the Oscar? No, BAFTA. I'm just, BAFTA, I'm no. I think, I think Cody is winning. Okay. Uh, I would just say Woody Norman, uh, I think part of the reason he got nominated, a lovely performance, is that he's a British kid who does a dead ring or American accent and come on come on there's no way anybody can know he's American or oh, not, I, so not American. many people are shocked to learn that he's British so I think also I, I predicted him because last year Alan Kim got in because I was Aww. like a kid <laughs> uh, that's all it's also diverse you know it's a child right right we love kids mm-hmm. uh anything else on supporting actors before we go to supporting actors which I, I cruelly skipped over to go to Mike Feist I, I know so rude to the ladies um um no again I can't believe I got five for six <laughs> Supporting actors, I think I got four for five. I mean, four yeah, for four. six. I, I got three for six because I, I made a last minute change yesterday. That was bad. So the nominees at BAFTA here, Too Many Windows, the story of my life. Uh, Katrina Ball for Belfast, Jesse Buckley for Lost Daughter, Ariana DeBose for West Side Story, and Dowd for Mads, Anjanae Ellis uh, for King Richard, and Ruth Nega for Passing. So I had four of these six. I had Bell, I had Katrina Ball, Jesse Buckley, Ariana DeBose, and Ruth Nega. Yeah, so yesterday I dropped and out for Catherine Hunter. So. so I had Catherine Hunter also. Bad idea. <laughs> Macbeth only got one nomination. Uh, so yeah. I, I, I would say here, uh, you know, pretty chalk in a lot of these. Like, well, I, no Kirsten surprised. Dunst. No Kirsten Dunst, which is a Jesse little bit Plemons of Jesse Plemons got in, but not Kirsten Dunst. But I would say that that proves that, like, she wasn't top two. I don't know if Jesse was top two, but I feel like there was more. Jesse of, was not top two. No, but I'm like, there's more of a there was more of a, hey, like, let's save him rather. Like, I think the top two are probably Ariana and uh, Katrina. I think Ariana and Katrina are top two. And then you're going to save like Jesse Buckley and Dowd and Janae Ellis and Ruth Nega. And yeah, then, those are sound jury picks, I think. This is a good category. I could see a lot of these transferring over. I think great news for Anjanu Ellis uh, getting in here. Yeah, after like. missing SAG. After missing uh, SAG, that was great. Ruth Nega continuing strong. Uh I love Jesse Buckley's performance in The Lost Daughter. I, I just don't think that could happen at Oscar. And I would say the winner here again is Ariana DeBose then. For Batman. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they, you know, just go for her. If like, depending on how much they, they the Brits like West Side Story. Like are, if, if she, you know, continues to like steamroll, like if she wins SAG and everything, like are, 
I could see them both rubber stamping her and also not. Right. Uh, then who would you say would win if she doesn't? Katrina? Mm, I don't know. Maybe Katrina. I don't know. What about Ruth Nega for passing? I see oh my God, happening. I would love that. I could That'll see that happening too. Yeah, uh, that would. I think, I think if a jury were voting for the winners, I could see Ruth winning. Yeah. Um, I love that like she is going to probably make it at Oscars. I'm like 99% sure. And the only thing, ironically, maybe, maybe not so much, but the only thing she's missed is Critics' Choice. <laughs> of all I, the I'm going to guess... Joyce, not, I'm going to guess if they voted this week that she would make it. Um, yeah, she would She would have been nominated this week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they announced uh, their nominations December 13th. Yeah. Yeah, I think if they waited a month, she probably would have gotten it. Yeah. Just my guess. Uh, best original screen. You want to just go some, we don't have to do all these, but I do want to go through a couple of these. Best original screenplay nominees were Ricardo's, Belfast, Don't Look Up, King Richard, and Licorice Pizza. Feels like this, at least four of these five are pretty set for Oscars. And yeah. So this is not juried wide membership. Yeah um and yeah you know the typical ones i would say paul because of how strong liquor's pizza was i would say that pta is a is an inside shot here to win at the baptist yeah i think it's between him and belfast agreed uh adapted screenplay this is a great category as well i'm very into these coda drive my car dune the lost daughter power of the dog no west side story no again um i i think they're just like not into <laughs> well it's also a musical as well and i don't know there's like like a bias i think against um like i guess maybe they don't think you write enough i don't know i don't know like their songs or something um because i also miss the scripter and i don't i don't think they nominated late miss here no, either. But that was never that was never seen as like a, a screenplay thing. You know, it was no. they, they didn't have uh, Tony Kushner behind it. So he got nominated for Lincoln, but he was not nominated for Munich. He got Oscar nominations for both Munich and Lincoln. So still, I, I still I still got Tony in the Oscars. I don't think there's gonna. I don't think yeah, I mean, like Jane and Jane is winning this. So uh, best casting, which I feel like the Oscars should absolutely do. I don't understand why they. Yeah, don't. they have a casting branch. But no category. Clearly should have a category for best casting. Here was Boiling Point, Dune, The Hand of God, King Richard, and West Side Story. Great news. I feel like good good on Netflix for getting The Hand of God out there uh, from their international feature and moving it into the best casting here. I think that's good. People really do like that movie, it seems like. Mm. I went I went two for five here. <laughs> I went one for five. So wow. it's on me. I had, uh, I had Belfast, Power of the Dog, West Side Story, Don't Look Up, and Coda. Okay. I only got Boiling Point and West Side Story here because the I, I also had Coda. I had After Love and Power of the Dog. So I, I dropped Belfast yesterday for Boiling Point. So uh, good good choice. There I would say uh, further proof that maybe uh, if we could build a time machine, that not getting the screeners to sag was a de de detrimental move because if it got best casting here, hard to imagine it didn't get best ensemble at, at sag. Still what for West Side Story. It's right? Yeah. It's really, uh, uh, really a tough you know, beat. It's even here where they did not like it. Clearly, did not make enough. Not five. I mean, a very deserving casting nomination. I incredibly yeah. so, but I'm like still shocked. That not I know, and it would like easily win ensemble. At Pretty SAG remarkable. Uh, so. Best best cinematography choice. Just quickly, no, Dune, Nightmare Alley, No Time to Die, The Power of the Dog, Tragedy of Macbeth. Uh, a lot of these, I feel like, could transfer over to the Oscars. First time we're mentioning No Time to Die. I believe it was also best British film nominee. It got a, it got a ton. It also made uh, editing again. Yep. It got ace, and, and I think it's it gonna get. Back. I think it could get a few. Obviously, we've talked about it. You know, Oscar. I you know I I predicted no time to die in adapted screenplay. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, costume, design. yeah. This this was a cinematography was a Macbeth's only nomination. So I think, even though like it got a good response after it dropped on Apple a couple weeks ago. I, it might have been like too late. And this is my bias showing. I just don't think it's going anywhere personally. And I think the comps, I've seen people say like if they, in fact, this week on our, our good friend and colleague, Daniel Montgomery was suggesting that if the Coen's got, if, if the Oscars love Buster Scruggs so much that they got three nominations that Macbeth could probably do at least three nominations. Uh, 
I don't believe I that. mean, I don't think like anyone's predicting it to get like 10 nominations. No, it would be like maybe screenplay, maybe Denzel, maybe cinematography, right? Like those three seemingly are like the three that. Mm-hmm. Are- and even like screenplay is whiffy because it's Shakespeare. I could see it getting like one in cinematography. I just, I don't know. I think Buster Scruggs is more accessible somehow than Shakespeare, I would argue. Well, yes. And, and it was more widely seen because it was on Netflix. So yes. those are my two. Those are I mean, we've, two we've, we've had like uh, unrelated Oscar conversations about uh, Apple products. <laughs> right, right. Uh, yeah, they have great stuff. So hopefully- Yeah, like Swan Song, it. like Mahershala, if you haven't watched Swan Song, watch it because Mahershala was great in it, so- I would say one thing, I, I don't want to move past cinematography too quickly as I was just doing, because Ari Wagner is the first uh, woman ever nominated in cinematography from the BAFTA Awards. So, you know, I mean, we got uh, our first woman at the Oscars a couple of years ago with Rachel Morrison. Rachel Morrison. So, I can yeah. see, can Ari Wagner win here? I mean, I seem like, it seems like the favorite would be like Dune or Macbeth probably. I, I don't have her winning here or at the Oscars. But I, I don't, I think I don't have her winning yet, it. but I, I can see moving her up. I just think that there's going to be a good narrative there. And it's hard to argue that Power of the Dog is not like gorgeous. I think that's like, it's one of its main selling. Oh yeah, for sure. So I'm like, um, um, and I always wonder. I don't like, know. I, I feel like we just can't ride that narrative too much because there are no. so many narratives every year. And I just, I don't know. It's, I wouldn't be writing it just for that narrative. I'm on, I have it in two, I think at the Oscars. I think I have Dune winning here at the Oscars. I'm just wondering like, this is again, what happens when the Oscars are the end of March and you spend like six months thinking about this. But my overthinking is like, what if the people take science fiction cinematography seriously when it's so entwined with like the visual effects and then like there's like Power of the Dog, which is seemingly more naturalistic and like not visual effect influenced. Does that like make people think that it's like a better pick? I don't know. I mean, that's in Gravity one. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> got me there. No, 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 it's there. Uh, Costume design, Cruella, Cyrano, Dune, French Dispatch, Nightmare Alley. Good, solid picks there. Cyrano did uh, pretty well below the line for a show, a a movie that like no one has seen is not out yet. Still not out, shockingly. Another one that I'm just like, get it out, but uh, not out yet. They're just going to punt it even more. (laughs) They just keep pushing it back. uh, Was was Spencer shortlisted here or no? Longlisted here? Costumes? Yes. So bad news for Spencer. Again. Again, Spencer, zero. Uh, best film editing, Belfast, Dune, Licorice Pizza, No Time to Die, and Summer of Soul. I would love to see that kind of- uh, Great, also. yeah. We, we need to normalize nominating non-narrative uh, films yes. in craft categories and also best picture, like animated films and documentaries. Totally. So good for Summer of Soul. Um, Power of the Dog, missing editing. So uh, we also, did we mention Belfast, missing cinematography? We didn't so, miss Belfast missed cinematography. Belfast missed cinematography, Power Dog missed editing. So, so good to know there. If you're again for for maximum chaos, I would say. Uh, I don't know who I would even pick in this category right now. I guess Belfast maybe in editing. I don't know from Bath. Um, I I Dune probably. I would good, say like also good for licorice pizza. For and I would say negative for here. Don't Look Up because I think Hank Corwin. I've had him in as like an Oscar pick for a while. Do, Don't Look Up clearly was like a popular pick here from the BAFTAs. It was a long, like, I think it had 15 long missions, right? Or something like that. And it had obviously was a Best Picture nominee. You got Leo in that it wasn't nominated for editing. Makes me think that like the amount of editing maybe was too much for BAFTA, though we've seen Bohemian Rhapsody won for most editing. So, and this is like way better edited. So I don't know. Uh, maybe we've all like learned our lesson from bohemian rhapsody that would be a shame because like bohemian rap like <laughs> the <Hank> Owens <laughs> editing has done that specifically and like not not differently like bohemian rhapsody felt like it was cutting around things and hank corwin's editing was like this is how you make a hyperactive movie but who knows uh, yeah the, we don't have a, a scene in don't look up like the dinner table scene in don't look up is not like that scene in bow rap but it's no. just like no. 57 shots between people. <laughs> uh, hair and makeup, Cruella, Cyrano, Dune, Eyes of Tammy Faye, and House of Gucci. It seems pretty chalk. No notes there, I would say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Tammy Faye, uh, again, was not expecting Jessica Chastain, an actress, but this is uh, this one makes sense. Yep. Uh, original score, Daniel Pemberton, our pal, his first BAFTA nomination. Who's also British. <laughs> Being the Ricardos, love it. Nikki Nikki Bertel for Don't Look Up. Hans for Dune. 
Alexandra Desplav for French Dispatch, Johnny Greenwood for Power of the Dog. Great category. This rules. This one's good. Yeah. Um, I I know like everyone wants Hans Zimmer to win. Um, but I don't know. I, I, I really just want Nicholas Bertel to win an Oscar. So a BAFTA would be great. I will <laughs> say I will say like I think we talked about this when like Penelope Cruz missed the long list. I think Parallel Mothers clearly was just like failure to launch too late here for BAFTAs. I think if we were looking at this and thinking Oscars, like the score from Parallel Mothers is a strong contender uh, for mm. score a nomination at the Oscars, but this is a good list. Nikki Bertel, I don't think he'll win though. I think Zimmer's going to win. Yeah, um, I know. I just I just want him to win for something, so I don't care what it is. <laughs> Maybe he'll win song because BAFTA doesn't have a song category here. <laughs> uh, production design with Cyrano Dune, French Dispatch, Nightmare Alley, and West Side Story. Two Adam Stockhausen nominations here for French Dispatch. Also, I, did Nightmare Alley get all its uh, long list mentions? Perhaps. Like, it, it like flopped on the long list, but I think it, it actually got the nominations everywhere. Well, and its nominations are not a surprise. I haven't, I think I still know. No, like it's always been craft heavy. Let me look. Um, cinematography. Yeah. Costume design. Yes. And then this is a very exciting for people right now as I'm just going through the long list. <laughs> Well, they could also uh, they could be watching Nightmare Alley instead. Let's yeah. this, oh, it awesome. didn't it didn't hit score. That's all. So Which is a bummer because the Nathan, Nathan Johnson score is really good, and also uh, totally ignored by the Oscars too. Made no sense. Uh, didn't even make mm-hmm. them watch. Yeah, so it got it made three of the four long list mentions. So good for Nightmare Alley. Yeah. Best sound. We'll go through quick. Quiet Place, Dune, Last Night in Soho, No Time to Die, West Side Story. Good list. I've interviewed some of these people, Joyce, uh, I'm going to say. So who, who you're going to pick to win? Here I picked Dune. Who was the best interview? <laughs> no, they're all great interviews, Joyce. If the interview wasn't good, it's my fault, not theirs. Uh, but uh, Dune, I think, is going to win because I think when you think Dune, you think sound. Yeah. Um, I also wish they didn't combine the categories at the Oscars because I feel like Dune would be a shoe-in for sound editing and West Side Story would be a shoe-in for sound mixing. It is funny that this is a year where you definitely would have been able to see a split because of the musical aspect. Mm-hmm. And also that would have basically guaranteed a nomination for Tick, Tick, Boom and sound mixing as well. And I don't know if it can make just the one sound category now. I think that's a tough beat. Yeah. Best visual effects, Dune, Free Guy, Ghostbusters, Afterlife, Matrix Resurrections, and No Time to Die. The uh, uh, poor Marvel. No Marvel. <laughs> I would say I have a lot. I have, I have Ghostbusters, Afterlife at, at the Oscars too. I think recreating, uh, resurrecting Harold Ramis as a v- VFX character uh, probably will get it in. That's a spoiler alert, but also the movie's been out for months. So uh, apologies if you haven't seen Ghostbusters Afterlife. Yeah, spoilers. We're, we're all about spoilers here. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, I, if it's out, we can I, talk I would about say it. I'm, I'm a, I have a hard time believing No Time to Die makes it in at the Oscars. I think this is a British bias. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've seen before that uh, Bond films tend to do pretty well here not maybe not necessarily overperform but they they do well at the baftas so that's mm-hmm. why i i had no time to die in adapted screenplay amazing <laughs> such a such a leap you should have put but, gary fuganaga in director <laughs> i know i know i mean i think some people are predicting it in like best picture as well I, saw, I think i definitely saw variety at least one article either variety or hollywood reporter had it in there for best i know picture. or like daniel craig like people yeah. were thinking like he was top two yeah, yeah but, why not um you know he should be top two for that actors on actors interview Still the best. Yeah. Joyce, I got a ring light, by the way. Check this out. I know. Show it to everybody. Okay, so it's on right now. Make sure it doesn't fall on your head. <laughs> now it's off. Is it Daniel Craig's, though? I don't think so. Oh. I think Daniel Craig probably didn't buy his for 30 bucks off Amazon. I'm going to guess. No, he said it was sent to him, probably by Variety. <laughs> <laughs> probably. They probably sent him a kit. Uh, animated feature, Joyce, Encanto, Feline, Luca, Mitchell's versus the Machines. I have all four of those in at the Oscars. I think Encanto wins this even though Flea is here and it's probably a more acclaimed movie. I feel like they're going to go mainstream in Encanto. Um, this is for BAFTA. Yeah. Probably, not Oscar. Yeah. Um, not and they Oscar. usually have four or, or three nominees. So a uh, nice four to have four this year. A documentary feature was Becoming Cousteau, Cow, Flea, The Rescue, and Summer of Soul. That Summer of Soul got a second BAFTA nomination leads me to believe it will win here because I think that shows strength in, in numbers. But what do you think? Um, yeah, that would be cool. I don't know. I could see that or Flea. 
Uh, good category though. Yeah. International feature was Drive My Car, The Hand of God, Parallel Mothers, Petite Maman, and Worst Person in the World. Very great list of movies here. Um, yes. So I know Parallel Mothers. <laughs> So Parallel Mothers here, I don't have the long list up. You maybe know off the top. Was Titan not long listed here in international feature? Um, I don't know. Let me see. And was Flea not listed here in international feature? Those are my two questions. Titan was here. So Titan not making here. it here, but getting in for directors is obviously- a Well, jury again, director- like Jury. Right. Jury. Yeah. right. But still strange, I feel like, but whatever. Um, yeah, so yeah, Tatan was here and Fleet was here. And... Both missed. But hard to argue with that list. Those are good movies. Mm -hmm. And then finally, um, what do you think? I want to do, which would be best British film is the last one, Joyce. With 10 nominees. <laughs> After Love, Ollie and Ava, Belfast, Boiling Point, Cyrano, Everyone's Talking About Jamie, House of Gucci, that great British film, Last Night in Soho, No Time to Die, and Passing. So it's a very solid list. Uh, yeah. Uh, so you have Gucci winning, right? <laughs> I don't think so. I think <laughs> Belfast is going to win. Yeah, I think Belfast is winning. Um, <laughs> I don't think it's winning picture. I think Power to Dog is winning picture. So I think Belfast will win. Outstanding British film. I would agree with that. I think this is basically... So we're going to do it like we said. We're going to do our Oscar picks in moments and it's a different video and, and but headlines from bath to joyce and, and what would be like your two or three biggest things i mean well obviously best Oscar. actress the best actress for sure <laughs> how do you how will bath the or well I okay so like I, oscar voting closed tuesday certainly. so these nominations have no impact like no one's going to be like oh i'm gonna nominate jesse plummins now no correct but it also maybe is predictive or indicative of how the voters yes. are thinking like we'll we'll have a better idea after tuesday of you know what uh bafta indicated in retrospect you know like maybe if like leo gets in it's like oh he was like always getting in right i would say uh I don't know. For me, I feel like great uh, Leo. It, it made me reconsider a couple of uh, major categories. I would say just uh -huh. just based on my gut, which maybe is going to fail, and I'll be very wrong. But I think uh, a lot of the people we've kind of just kind of pushed forward throughout the last few months are maybe not as locked in as we thought. I would say. Mm, yeah, um, but also we kind of like saw some of that coming as well, like with Kristen Stewart, you know. Well, Chris and Stewart, I've already kind of like maybe slightly written yeah. off. Yeah, but but I know like a lot of people were still hanging on to her and thinking she could get in at BAFTA and that would be, you know, a nice feather in her cap. I like I know some people thought like she'd be top two here, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, that is a tough beat for for for. I, I I do feel bad. Um, it's it's gotta be rough being told you're the front runner all season long and then. I mean, we've seen that before with like J Lo and Hustlers. I guess would be the last. But, I, but even with J Lo, like there's still kind of uncertainty with it because like she was almost certainly going to be a lone nominee. Yeah, she was going to be a lone nominee. You know, whereas you could you could see other you could see you could have seen Spencer being a Jackie. You know, when I left the Spencer screening at Telluride, I'll never. I mean, like I mean, we know about your friend. <laughs> maybe on, I saw it. I sat next to Clayton Davis, who works at Variety. Joyce good yes. guy does their award stuff and we walked out and i was like i really liked it i did not like jackie at all so i was like already like oh this is way better than jackie really like kristen stewart's performance and i was sitting there and talking to him as we were leaving the theater with our masks on and i was like i don't know man like what if this gets like four four nominations and i was like if you get kristen stewart if you get pablo rain for director costume design and hair and makeup i was like those are the four i think you could get and now it's not going to probably get any so I, I definitely feel like it it just uh the industry response to it was a lot softer than I expected, I guess. Um, Chris, do you, do you know what just happened? No, well, what? it didn't just happen, but uh, we, we won BAFTA. <laughs> we died. We did? Yes. <laughs> Joyce, tell, tell me what you're talking about. Let's take a look here. Uh, with, a, with an astounding 64.81%. <laughs> wow. Way to go us. I know. Breaking news, guys. <laughs>
I'm going to take a look here and see how we did. Let's see. I, I'm pretty sure I did better last year because I, I got a one category completely right last year. <laughs> so it looks like Riley actually, Joyce, had 70%. And yes, had, among our editors, but among, among the experts. experts. And you and I had 64.8. Yeah. Way to go, us. Just crushing it. I know. Look, look at us. We uh, baff the experts. We, we know the juries so well. <laughs> I mean, I'm not surprised, you know. Like I'm not gonna, not gonna, I'm not gonna be humble here. I, I figure we had it, you know. <laughs> uh, I can't, can't wait for next year. Can't, can't wait to see what new uh, tweak they do to the jury system that we have. I would say like this system. year's was not as. I mean, it's total chaos. But like, like we said, none of these are, none of these are like egregious snubs. And like, I actually they, really they like make these nominees. Sense. It, it. It's only crazy to you if you don't know about the jury system. Like it, I'm talking about like the acting nominations. Right. But of the acting nominees, the only one I would say that I think is like agreed, like the only egregious snub that I would say here is like Andrew Garfield. Everybody else getting snubbed. Yeah. I'm like, I could see that. I could see that happening at the Oscars. I could see that. Like of the people who are snubbed, none of them I feel like are as sure things as Andrew Garfield is for an Oscar nomination, I guess. Even Nicole Kidman, who I still have winning on Oscar. Uh, but I'm like, I don't know. I, I could, I, I'm not like even Olivia Coleman. None of these are, you know, I don't know. So that that would be my one takeaway. Last year, I felt like it was a lot more chaotic. Well, we also didn't know what to expect last year. Right. So we have one year to go off of, but then they have a change this year. So we have to take that into account. So uh, yeah. so that's it Joyce. so that was the BAFTA award so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna if you're watching this stick around look around on the site because we'll have uh, predictions from everybody I feel like coming up including us so uh we have to actually change our Oscar predictions now because I haven't touched them yet <laughs> we're gonna do that and then re resurface uh all right Joyce I'll talk to you later okay. Bye.